I grew up um, in a very very abu- physically and emotionally abusive setting at home and my parents were divorced and my dad wasn't around and he wasn't aware of what was what was going on um and and it was it was almost daily where i was physically abused and thrown out and had to stay with friends and um had to fight back and i would i would constantly um work out and in my teens i i found a friend um who owned a gym her name was Kathy DeMarco, and um, she would give me a free membership to the gym. So rather than becoming a drug addict mm. or becoming a prostitute or um, hurting myself in, in any way, I, I found um, going to the gym and becoming stronger physically and emotionally was what I needed to survive. So I became obsessed with going to the gym. Like I would skip school, and I just wanted to become physically tough to be able to defend myself and fight back, and mentally too, and emotionally too. Um, so, so I did that for a long time and, um, and then I, I fought back and there was, there was one pretty bad night where I was being dragged around by my ankles and smashed into walls and doorways and I lost a tooth. My face was being kicked in and, um, I ran away and, and, um, I had a probation officer at the time. My, my, um, family took what's called a chins out on me. It's, it stands for child in need of service. And um, so when when you get that taken out on you, um, you get assigned a probation officer. And so my probation officer loved me. She's like, "You're getting straight A's in school. You're um, a lovely kid. Like you're you're really strong. There's nothing wrong with you. You're just in an abusive situation. So we need to get you out." Um, so how old are you at this point? I was like 13 at this point. Okay. Yeah. So um, it was my whole life that I was I was physically and emotionally abused, and kicked out. And it was. <laughs> I mean, since you were a baby, like, when do you first remember? Oh, from, like, three years old. Oh, okay. Like, first memories. Um, but it's okay. Like, you know, talking about this and sharing my story, because I, I, have, I have forgiven and I have, um, I have been healed. I truly feel like I've been healed and God has healed me. My mind, my body, my spirit, my soul. Um, and I don't just say that because it sounds fluffy. It, it's really the truth. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's powerful. I feel like I'm talking about a movie. I don't feel mm. like, I don't feel like, um, sometimes I'll get emotional, but I don't feel like it, it's me anymore. Um, but anyway, so, but I know that it is, it's hard to explain. Um, but they did take me out of my home and, and I was, I began my journey into the foster care system. So, um, I was 13 or 14 mm-hmm. at this time and people would, like you said in the intro, people would just want babies and I would sleep in, literally I would sleep in bunk beds that were made for like a five-year-old and I would be tossed around from home to home because people just wouldn't want me. And, um, and so I finally ended up in a girl's home with, um, about six other girls and yeah, I, these girls were seriously tough cookies. One had a, a, a slice from her, her lip to her ear because she got into a knife fight and there was a big scar on her, on her cheek. And I mean, these were tough girls. It was like, it was kind of like being in jail. So I was into, I was working out at this gym, um, that, so this, this woman, Kathy, who owned the gym, she would come to court every couple of months when she found out that I was being placed into foster care because I would skip school and I would spend like 13 hours at the gym just working out. She would take me to this small non-denominational Christian church and, um, and we would go in and it was probably like about 20 people and people were, you know, raising their hands in, in prayer and worship. And I was like, these people are nuts. Like they're crazy. And I just remember judging them and not understanding and, um, and I, I kept going back after she passed away. And I, and I eventually was one of those people raising their hands in prayer and, and worship. And I, <laughs> I got saved and I became a Christian. And that's really when my life turned around. And I understood that I am so loved and I am so valued and valuable to Jesus. And, and what Jesus did for us. And, and that I'm forgiven for my mistakes and my mess ups. And that I can, because I'm forgiven, I can forgive others. Hey and folks. So- okay. Back by very popular demand is our plant powered plate fridge magnet, which you are going to receive for free. If you leave us a rating and a review on whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on. So here are the details. Just write your quick review. Does not need to be long. Does not need to be a whole story. Just be honest and speak from the heart. 
Then take a quick screenshot of the review you wrote and email it to us at podcast at switchforgood.org. That's podcast at switchforgood.org. And include your mailing address so we can send you a power plate. We are doing this because the more reviews we garner, the higher we go in search results, which means more folks will learn about our podcast. So the power is in your hands. Leave us a review and zoom, zoom, your power plate arrives at your doorstep. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts, discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products, and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future.